Can you see it yeah, through I the gap can. there? Yeah, I right. can. We've spotted a newly hatched ibis chick. They are absolutely adorable little fluff balls uh, when they hatch. And we're talking about a bird the size, like it's a baby chicken size when it's hatched. Um, and then they grow very, very quickly. So, you know, they're getting up to a kilo. So from 50, 60 grams to a kilo in four weeks. This is a bit of adaptation. Palm trees aren't natural. So before they came to the cities, ibis never nested in palm trees in Australia, not a thing. But here we can see, I like to call them the condos of the ibis world, because <laughs> you've just got layers of, of nests and they circle the palm and they're great habitat for ibis. So in fact, in the wetlands, they're nesting at ground level rather than being, or water level. Water level, yes. Yeah. yeah. And in a really open floodplain. But here in the city, they've turned palm trees into islands that are safe for them to nest in. These city ibis play a role in helping their distant country cousins. Something scientists have discovered from studying, of all things, their feathers. So we're going to look for some feathers that have been discarded by the birds. So when they're all old and worn out, they'll drop their feathers and grow some new ones. So they don't drop it and like get naked. They drop it like one at a time, right? They do. <laughs> Ecologist Kate Brandis is on a feather hunt. Yeah, there's one. She's been examining ibis feathers for clues as to where they travel and how far they go. I really want to find a flight feather. And here at the Royal Botanic Garden, there's no shortage of ibis or their feathers. I think we might be in luck. And I say that because it's a big one. It is. See, that's so much bigger than the other feathers yep. that we've found. It's got a very thick bottom and a black tip. And it's asymmetrical. So cool, I didn't know that. So, and this is, yeah, the black tip, which is a giveaway for white ibis. You can tell so much just by looking, but you take it a step further, right, because you are looking at the molecular structure of these feathers. We do. We use the feathers to tell us about movements. Kate and her team analysed feathers from all around Australia as a part of the citizen science project called the Feather Map of Australia. You can see the ends, ah. they start to wear away. The feathers reveal what birds have eaten and therefore where the birds have been. Well, we can tell where they grew the feather because it's a snapshot of diet there and then where that feather was found, then obviously they've travelled between the two places. This wildlife forensic work will allow Kate's team to further study how the ibis population has moved around the country. At what sort of stories does it tell you about birds like the ibis? The genetic study we did was really interesting because we wanted to know whether the urban ibis were mixing with the inland ibis. And what was the answer? They do mix. They do mix? Yes. We looked at urban ibis in Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne and compared it to some of the ibis populations that we collected from inland in the Murray-Darling and there's a good mix of genetic diversity between all of them indicating that they're all sort of mixing at some level. Why is genetic intermingling important? It's important in that it allows those birds to have resilience to change and the more genetic diversity means they have that ability to adapt. Also, disease transmission between birds is becoming very important at the moment with Japanese encephalitis. And there's a lot of discussion at the moment about which species are involved in that transmission. So knowing which birds move up and down that sort of part of the country is really important. And also, like, it means then that any one population of birds might not be as isolated as we might suspect from just looking around us at the park. Yeah, they have massive capacity for movement. They will travel from the coast to the inland when the wetlands are good and then back again when they need to. Incredible. It is amazing. Australian white ibis are like the ultimate urban adapters, right? I mean, they can eat almost anything, they can nest almost anywhere, and their attitude to life is like, hey, it's bin day somewhere, let's just do it, right? But it's their ability to travel long distances and breed with other ibis further afield that ultimately gives them their resilience. They are a great survivor. <laughs>